to rush now or next, please. Thank you. Um, I wish to pursue the, the point around um, long-term fiscal trends and tax implications. In, in your report, you're saying uh, long-term projections show debt rising to over 100% of GDP by 2052 to 53, and reaching 267% of GDP in 50 years if upward pressure on health pensions and social care spending and the loss of motoring taxes are accommodated. It's pretty um, pretty scary kind of um, set of uh, uh, challenges ahead. Um, in, in that context, um, and now coming back to the short term, immediate term, where there's a lot of debate around taxation, um, would a tax cut now be sustainable in the short term? And, and then, of course, medium term, what's the you know, what would be the appropriate trajectory for tax cuts in terms of time frames um, for that an incoming um, prime minister, possibly even a new, another new ch uh, chancellor might have to think about if they were looking at these longer term trends and um, uh, implications. I might ask Andy to come in on this one. Uh, sure. So, um, as you know, we, uh, we, we don't give advice on what's appropriate, but the, I think the message that you would take from the report is that, um, that there are a lot of pressures, both short-term risk type pressures and long-term uh, slow building pressures on the public finances. And over the past uh, five years, we've seen the tax burden rise, or at least the uh, on a path to rise, and that has largely gone to pay for a larger health service, a uh, more generous social care system. So the kind of pressures that build over the long term. And you know, our, our report would say that to uh, maintain fiscal sustainability, either uh, other, other parts of the public spending system would need to be uh, cut back or taxes would need to rise. Now, we, we have no view on the, the right policy levers, um, but that's the, you know, that's the broad message for, for the report. And, so. and what's your, what would be your reflection on um, if, if there was a need for tax cuts to rise? I mean, we're already at that point where taxes have been raised. Um, what, what's the time frame? What, what, what would be the time frame for that? What would be an appropriate time frame to have ta tax cuts? cuts as well as tax rises? Um, I'm not sure we're in a position to say what's an appropriate time frame. I mean, the, the re one of the reasons why the early part of our projections is better, you know, debt is lower than uh, in our 2018 projections is because the medium term fiscal position has improved. And it's improved because uh, the government has raised the taxes in the aftermath of the pandemic. Uh, by more than it has raised public spending. So you know, tax cuts on their own would uh, reduce or reverse some of that improvement in the medium term fiscal position. So the fiscal position will be under greater pressure. Uh, those, are, those are choices uh, that you know, it's, it's not really for us to, to comment on. Yeah. Um, so, so what we, I mean, I suppose the, the question is, is, is the current, I mean, is, is the current position of uh, where we are in terms of tax rises, then a proposal, certainly with the previous Chancellor, a proposal to reduce taxes a bit later, um, is that sustainable? Uh, we, would that put the economy in a sustainable footing? I think you know, the, perhaps it's easier to think about this in terms of the kind of medium term fiscal <coughs> headroom against yep. the, the fiscal targets, because I think in, you know, long term sustainability is. Is about the you know if you cut taxes you will need to think about public spending or other yep. taxes to, to maintain a fiscal position. Uh, in terms of our most recent forecast, we were looking at roughly thirty billion pounds worth of headroom against the fiscal targets three years away from now, and uh, you know that is on the basis of taxes rising next year, taxes having risen. Uh, and in net terms this year, and so uh, of you know of that thirty billion uh, of headroom, you know, more than all of it is accounted for by 
tax rises that have either just taken effect or are taking effect next year. So uh, you know, taxes can be cut uh, if that can either be by reducing headroom against fiscal targets, it can be financed by public spending measures or you know, balanced with public spending measures, or, or indeed you know, fiscal targets change. Does anyone else want to come? I guess maybe just to underscore the point that the central message of our report is that um, in the long run, if you want the public finances to remain sustainable, a fiscal tightening is what is required of, on the order of 1.5% of GDP. Now, that can be done either by spending cuts, uh, sorry, or by, by, spending, by spending cuts or by tax increases. Um, but, uh, I mean, the central message of this report is that a loosening of fiscal policy is not going to improve the sustainability of the public finances. It would make it worse. And, and yet, what we have um, in the, uh, and I'm not expecting you to comment on the current leadership mm -hmm. contest, but what we, what we have is um, candidates, and one of them will be Prime Minister, almost all of them uh, are proposing very large tax cuts, you know, in anything ranging from 50 billion to, you know, 30 billion to 50 billion and so on. Um, so, so, come September, we're going to have a new Prime Minister, and if the priority is to introduce tax cuts, is, is that going to uh, present um, a, a challenge for inflation, given inflation is at, at the level it is at, or is it going to reduce inflation? David, do you want to take I think it depends what kind of tax cuts they might be, to the extent that they feed through quickly to expenditure that will be happening in an economy which currently has a uh, pretty low unemployment, possibly near full employment level. There's some indications that on the sort of forward-looking consumer sentiment and investment sentiment indicators that the economy might be slowing. So it could be that tax cuts, to the extent that they increase spending, come at a time when things would be slowing down anyway, and therefore that would have less of an effect on creating inflationary pressures. Are this, but sorry, could you just give some, give some more examples of where that where it, it wouldn't be supported? Yeah, I'm just, um, some of the consumer sentiment indicators have taken a, a sort of pretty sharp downturn in the last month or so. Taken at face value, that might suggest that consumer spending will <coughs> slow down a bit. There's plenty of talk out there, and I think it's only talk at the moment, about the economy possibly dropping into recession. On, on the technical definition of a couple of quarters of GDP falling, um, those are straws in the wind. I don't think one can feel confident about that as a central forecast. But if, if that's the way the economy went, then of course extra spending from a tax cut would be less inflationary than if you just carried on on the trajectory we've been on over the last few months, which actually has been growth in GDP. So it'll, it'll, it'll depend a bit. Yeah about how the, how the, how, what the momentum in the economy is. And does it depend on what you make the tax cuts on as well? Uh, and who gets yeah. the tax cuts? Um, I suppose that if you had uh, an increase in spending on investment, yep. if it were to come through that route, then ultimately that will be helpful in terms of the supply potential of the economy uh, and increase the capital stock more than a boost to consumption expenditure. It would also depend a little bit on what the import content was, and that's probably a bit different on different kinds of spending. Um, the more it's directed toward domestic spending, the more it will boost domestic inflation pressure. So it'll depend a bit on um, if such a thing were to happen, you know, what kind of tax cut, what's the timing, um, and, and what is the underlying momentum of the economy at, at, at that point. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before we pass on now to Alison.